Do complex legal issues hold you back? Let's get energized and bring clarity to your top legal questions. This is Law Talk with the Flock by Guzman Law Firm. Gina Gooseman, your host of Law Talk with the Flock, CEO, lawyer, author, and woman business leader, here to help navigate you and your way through business and your life as a leader and these current laws that we're dealing with and all the issues in business related to COVID-19. I am so excited to have with me today my guest, Lynette Meyer, a Sioux City CPA and a partner with Nichols Rising Company, and she has been my personal CPA for a couple of decades now. Lynette, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Gina. Yeah, I'm super excited. We're going to talk about some of the hot topics that people are asking you. I've probably been asking you all kinds of people about what's going on with COVID-19 and all these different issues, especially as it relates to their tax landscape. So Lynette, what kind of things are people asking you about and what are you seeing right now? Oh, well, it's been uh, it's been challenging, right? And we've been the good thing is we've been forced to be resilient. We've been forced to think outside the box. Lots of good leadership going on. Um, lots of resources. Uh, by far, the biggest challenge is that the resources are just coming out of the box like this without a lot of guidance. Uh, I think we all know when there's a new tax law, it can take months to get guidance on how it really applies in real life. And in this situation, uh, the businesses just needed the help. The resources rolled out quick. The guidance did not. And it was a, it was very challenging. Uh, the bank, you know, as far as the PPP loans, for example, the banks weren't given a lot of guidance as far as how to write these loans. Um, the the business owners weren't given a lot of guidance as far as what applies and that sort of thing. They changed the application process halfway through. Um, so that's really been the biggest challenge. Uh, the CARES Act, I think, is wonderful. the The spirit of the CARES Act is to keep our employees employed. And I really think that's that's the biggest focus of all business owners to, to keep your employees healthy and safe and comfortable and employed, right? Absolutely. They, have too. they do. And I read the CARES Act, they're all 1,200 pages of it, and there's a yeah. lot in there. And yet, even if you read it, and then when you're referencing back to the fact they wrote this application and then they revised it, and I know some people had their application all done and then they had to resubmit a new one. And now those loans have been funded. And I think we're still seeing new changes come out. I know just recently the IRS say something about, well, while you're not going to be taxed on the forgiveness, we aren't going to allow these expenses. And then now that's a controversy. Right, which is ultimately the same thing, right? You understand that, Gina. If you can't deduct the expenses, then essentially it's taxable. Um, obviously, you're still ahead. We don't let the tax court, the tax cart drive the horse. You're still ahead, um, but there are there are FAQs still coming out every day, and it'll be interesting once we get to the forgiveness period because that landscape is changing as well every day, and so. Uh, We'll just have to see how that plays out. It's It's been a challenge to stay on top of it, but everybody's doing their best. Well, I actually saw Senator Grassley has a, a joint bill with some other people to try and reverse that so that they do allow expenses for the CARES Act, which I personally hope that they do. Uh, <laughs> I've never gotten right. too involved in politics as it relates to those things. But uh, right now I'm like, okay, go, let's make that law pass because they'd make a huge right. impact for people. And I think uh, be in line with the original uh, meaning of the law when they said that it won't be taxed when you're forgiven, well, then they should let people deduct those expenses too. I feel pretty strongly on that. Right. And we'll just have to see where that where that ends up. This has all been a learning process for everybody as we go. Um, there are a couple really important things. If, if businesses did get PPP funding, yes, it's very important right now to, first of all, be keeping track of those expenses that apply for the forgiveness. Um, and bet. that's payroll, rent, mortgage, interest, utilities, basically. Um, so it's very important to track those very closely. Uh, and also it's very important to watch your headcount. 
because there will be a reduction if your head count decreases. And there's a couple different ways to, to track your head count. But it's as of June 30, you can, if, if employees had to lay people off or furlough employees, that's okay, but they have to be brought back by June 30 or your forgiveness could get reduced a little bit. So if, if you're going to hire people back in July, you need to hire them back in June. Good tip. Good tip. And do they have to be full-time employees too, don't they? I think they are uh, requesting the, FTEs. Yep. Yep. Full-time equivalents, FTE. So they don't necessarily have to be full-time equivalent or full-time employees because what they allow you to do is count the hours of your part-time employees and combine them. So if you have two people working part-time that are working 20 hours a week, that's an FTE. Okay. You get to add them up. You can combine them. There are a lot of questions on what's going to be able to be forgiven at the end of this, right? People got their money and they're still writing their rules and new guidance is coming out all the time. I've never seen such rapid change uh, so quickly in my whole career. Absolutely. I have not either. Um, In in fact, quite frankly, sometimes that's been frustrating is because the change has not been rapid, Um, but it is changing every day. Like I said, the IRS is still issuing FAQs. And uh, so we'll just have to keep our eye on it. Um, I know that SBA has has come out and said anybody who got over $2 million will be audited by the SBA. So those larger companies will be audited as far as the forgiveness piece. Uh, They haven't come out and made any statements about the smaller pieces as far as audits and that sort of thing. So we'll have to see where that ends up. Well, you're comfortable with audits, so you'll be able to give people some good guidance on what's it mean to get audited? It won't be my first audit. (laughs) (laughs) No, it won't be your first audit. So whenever things like that come, uh, you've been really helpful. So I think uh, as people are looking to the future, too, on their taxes, I know a lot of folks are still working on their 2019 taxes because there was a nice extension there. Yes, Yes, it was a very strange tax season because there was a lot more PPP work than 1040 work uh, there at the end with the timing of it all. And uh, tax returns became a smaller, a lower priority uh, as businesses were trying to navigate. And now those 2019 returns are actually due in July? In July. They, so they've extended everything to July, including the first and second quarter payments as of now. Oh, the first and second estimates are also extended. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's uh, good for people to know because it's hard to know what to estimate if you haven't gotten your taxes done yet, right? That's right. And there are obviously there are big differences. A lot of times clients base their estimates on last year and that's not valid for hardly anybody this year. And right. so it is nice that we have that extra time to see where the first two quarters are really going to fall before you have to make any payments. You bet. So what other kind of issues are people uh, trying to have uh, addressed right now as they're planning for their business in the future? It's just a a lot of uncertainty. It's a lot of uncertainty. Um, Certainly businesses have been affected all across the board. Uh, We've all heard the analogy, though, same storm, different boat, right? Uh, The restaurants and bars and salons are certainly impacted differently than service industries and, and that sort of thing are essential Uh, type of industries or labeled essential. Um, It is important to note that even if, you know, the PPP money did did run out. So it is important to note that if you didn't get funded for PPP, there are other resources. Um, FMLA has expanded some of their rules as far as if you have an employee who either is showing symptoms, there's some different rules as far as levels, but If they're showing symptoms or if they have to stay home to take care of somebody with symptoms, or even if they have a child um, who can't go to childcare or school, and so they need some time off for that. Um, FMLA has expanded and employers can get almost instant credit for paying those employees, you know, a a certain amount. Most of it's up to 80 hours. Uh, But I think that's really great. If you have an employee who has a child at home and has to stay home, um, what the employer can do is pay them and then take a credit on their payroll tax deposit. And so it is almost an instant you get reimbursed 
for paying that employee to do what's needed at this time. So I think there's some things like that that are really great. Um, there's also there's also a credit that you can take, a reimbursable credit that's along those same lines. So there are resources out there. If you didn't get the PPP funding, um, don't just give up. There are resources to help us help our employees. So it's been a it's been a great time of uh, seeing a lot of great leadership and and uh, thinking outside the box. I love your comment too. Don't just give up, right? I mean, that's what we have to do right now as business leaders. Just keep showing up and keep doing our best every day to lead these businesses and and helping our clients, even when there's some uncertainty. So I think that uh, you're doing a great job at that. And I love that you brought up that there's some tax credits um, available in the payroll process. And that doesn't take a long time for companies to get that money back, does it? No, no. A lot of companies deposit, you know, biweekly or at least monthly. And so when you normally would make your payroll tax deposit, um, which a lot of times is right when you pay the payroll, you get to just Mm -hmm. take a credit and offset it. So you do get reimbursed quickly. Uh, It is important that you can't use, it seems obvious, but you can't use the same wages for like for PPP and these payroll tax credits. It's, it's, the payroll tax credits are designed for money that you didn't get from PPP. You bet. They won't let you double dip, in other words. You're not supposed to double dip. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much for all your guidance today and for having this discussion with me. I know that you're super busy helping businesses in this crazy time, and I, I really appreciate you joining me on Law Talk with the Flock. Uh, I want everyone to stay healthy and have a great day and go make it worth it. Thanks, Lynette. Thanks for joining us for Law Talk with the Flock by Gooseman Law Firm. We hope you feel energized and ready to soar past your goals. Become a Flock fan and subscribe to our podcast for weekly episodes. Learn more at goosemanlaw.com.